Hi everybody, it's Spring with Soaps and Suds and Such, and today I'm making a vanilla pound cake homemade. And the first thing you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 325 degrees. And then you're going to want to take out six eggs out of the refrigerator and let those warm up to room temperature. You're going to want to use two sticks of real butter, that is the salted, and you cut it up into little tiny chunks or cubes and you want to let that sit out to room temperature. Then you're going to want to take and measure out one cup of milk. Now I have half of the milk here and half of it here because you're going to be using it two different times. So it's, it equals one cup of milk. You want that to sit out to room temperature. Then you're going to have to have three cups of sifted flour and if you don't have a sifter you can use a sieve or a strainer something of that nature then you're going to want three cups of granulated white sugar you're going to be using um, the six eggs you're also going to be using a half a cup of uh, Crisco shortening and you're also going to be using one teaspoon of baking powder you're also going to be using two teaspoons of vanilla and first of all after you have set out all those ingredients you're going to want to put Crisco shortening and what you do is you smear your pan full and I'm using this kind of a pan but you're going to want to cover every bit of it with Crisco shortening some people use butter I use Crisco okay after you do that you're going to take some flour flour and um, I just take my you can take like your sifter or your sieve and just sift some in there and then spread it about all over it till it's completely covered you want it all covered because you don't want this cake to stick. Okay, and um, I will bring you back in a minute to get started. <clears throat> okay, just to recap our ingredients, we've got first off, we've got our three cups of all purpose sifted flour, we have three cups of sugar here. We have our baking powder, which will be one teaspoon. We have one cup of milk split into two. You don't have to split it if you don't want to. That's the way I like to do it. And it's set to room temperature. We have two sticks of real butter. This is the salted. And that is cut into little chunks and at room temperature. We have a half a cup of Crisco shortening. We have six large eggs that are at room temperature we have our vanilla we'll be using two teaspoons of vanilla we first off we preheated our oven to 325 we done greased and greased our pan and floured it thoroughly okay then you'll want to after you grease or after you preheat the oven grease your pan thoroughly and flour it then you'll sift your flour Okay, now we're going to get ready to go to this next step. And let me set up the camera right. Okay, what you're going to do is in your mixing bowl, I'm using my KitchenAid. You could use just a, a bowl and a mixer. Um, but I'm using my KitchenAid today. I'm going to pour my sugar into the KitchenAid mixing bowl, like so. Pour that right in there. Set that bowl aside. Then you're going to want to um, put in your shortening. And get all of that in there.
And I'm just scraping it good so I can get all my shortening in there. Okay. Okay, we've got that. Next, you're going to want to put your butter in all your little chunks right in there like so. That is room temperature. Okay, scrape that off of there, like so. Okay. Put that aside. And then you're going to want to get this started blending. See how that's yellow? You're going to want to blend until that goes from yellow to a white looking cream steak. in thoroughly. You want that creamed until it is white because it's got a yellow look right now. Let me see if I can zoom you in more. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is you've got six eggs, but you're going to use one at a time. You're going to mix them one at a time. So I like to break the egg into a bowl one at a time to just to make sure you don't get any holes or anything like that. You don't want any holes in here, so I do it this way. One egg into a bowl at a time. And you're going to cream in that egg one at a time. First, I'm going to take that from the sides down in there, like so. Cream it in. Break another egg. You can have it ready. 
okay, that looks mixed in there pretty good. Put that down, put in another egg. sides. Whoops. Trying not to hit the sides or hit that middle piece. Actually, I'm going to scrape this off because I want the egg to get incorporated through the whole thing. Okay. Break another egg. That in there. Scrape down my sides. And yes, this is a time consuming cake, but it is delicious if you like wonderful pound cake and it makes a wonderful pound cake everybody around here only gets it <laughs> on holidays though because it is such a time consuming and lengthy process that if you you know if you do it like I'm telling you it will it turns out wonderful and you want a good pan pan is key because uh, mini pan stick, you have to make sure you grease it wonderfully. I mean, if you don't grease your pan right and flare it, then you're probably going to have a stick. Okay, put that back on. Get it break another egg. That in. Looks like that's mixing really good this time. I don't think I need to scrape it again. Okay, break another egg. We're almost done with the eggs. Getting closer. Put that in. Turn that on. And I'm going to get ready and go ahead and break my other egg. Let that blend in there good. Cut it up. Looking really good. Last egg. Okay. Get that blending really good. Move some of this out of my way. It's really creamy. Okay, now, hmm. now what you're gonna want to do, okay, is to the mixing bowl. We're gonna have to put half of our flour. So I'm gonna put in. Attempt to put in half of this flour. Let me see if I can find something to just use. So it'll be much easier. Okay. keep from losing part of it. See if that's about half. 
I don't believe it's close. Okay. We've got half our flour in there. Now, now you're going to want to put half of your milk. So you see I've got one of the cups of milk, which is a half a cup. I want to put that in there. Okay, now we're actually going to be moving over. We're not going to cut on the kitchen aid yet. We're just going to leave that sitting. And I'm going to bring you over here. Okay, now this is my other half of my milk, a half a cup. And I've got here a teaspoon of baking powder. What you're going to want to do is activate that. And we need to do this before we blend what we put in our mixing bowl. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that in there, like so. Just take and just barely stir it around a little bit. You see how it's bubbling? It's activating. I don't like to stir it and I don't know why I'm having to. Normally I don't have to stir it. Normally it just starts bubbling up and goes down in the meal, but if you can see those bubbles, I'm hoping you're catching that. That is activating. Okay, so now I've got to move you back over here. Okay, now to our mixing bowl, before we start blending, we're going to put in our two teaspoons of vanilla flavoring. So I'm going to pour that right in there like so. Okay. Oh, I love the smell of vanilla. It smells so good. Okay, now you're going to want to go ahead and blend this. Okay, now we are going to mix in the rest of our flour, the other half of our flour. Now, we're going to go ahead and mix in our activated milk. See all those bubbles? Just mix that in there. Put it in there like so. Okay. And we'll cut it back out.
Okay, here we go. Here it is in the pan. My oven is preheated. Now, a big key that you want to do for sure is you're going to want to um, let's see you are going to want to set that timer on your stove if you have a timer for an hour and a half if you don't have a timer then keep an eye on the clock because you want to leave it for one hour and a half and then take it out and then we'll go from there on uh, everything else that has to be done I'll bring you back once it's out of the oven. Okay, we've got it out of the oven. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put something on our hands. And we're going to go around it. Rubbing the sides. Because it is hot. This pan is really hot. But you just want to rub the sides all the way around okay okay now what you want to do if I can get it where you can see what I'm doing good I've got it on a pan one of the little pan things I'm, I'm taking a very thin knife if you can see that I'm going to go around the edge. Just That's just to make sure that it's loose. You rub around the edge and that loosens it. But to be on the safe side, we take a very thin knife and we go right around the edge like so. Then, I don't want to do it much in the center. But I think it's loose. It looks like it. Okay, then I'm going to take and kind of shimmy it. If you can see, just shimming it from side to side. Kind of shaking it. Okay, let me see if I've got the right plate. I wanted to use this plate. I don't know if that's going to work. I can't remember which one I usually use, but nope, that's too little. Okay, we're going to get it on this plate one way or the other. So I'm going to put it, this on top, like so. And we have to turn it upside down. We're just flipping it. And I just got to get a hold of it without getting burnt. Okay. There we go. It's a beauty. Let me get my pan over here and get it soaking. Very pretty. That's pretty. Okay. Now, what you want to do, we'll take that off of there. Like so. Move this. And I'm going to put, place these cups. Seeing, I think that one's a little short. Let me find another one about that height. No, too short. I know I've got another tall one. Okay, and that this is just coffee cups. Actually, let's use these. Well, that one may work. See if I've got three here that are similar. Yeah. I think this one might be similar. Real close. Okay, okay and you're just gonna want to have three three cups there. I'm like so. I'm going to take my plate and I'm going to set it up on these cups now. 
and you don't want a lot of jarring because if you have a lot of jarring it could fall but you see how I've got that lifted up I've got the cups down underneath you can see the handles right here that lifts it up and you're going to want to let it thoroughly cool completely cold before you wrap it now this is going to be going to a Thanksgiving dinner so I will be putting it in the pretty cake holder more than likely which is up on the top shelf and we'll have to have help getting it down you can see it it's up on the very top shelf so that's what I'm planning on putting it in but until I do that what I'll do is I'll put some tin foil because I like to use tin foil on these cakes um, you leave the, the air tends to make it dry out, you know, around. some people like it that way. It makes it really crunchy. Uh, me, I prefer to put tin foil. It helps holding the moisture. But you wait till it's completely cool, and then you can wrap this in some tin foil. That's what I'll be doing after it's cool. Then I'll put it into my container tomorrow whenever I take it to the dinner, the pretty glass cake holder. And then if there's any left, that will be wrapped into tin foil. And um, that's about it. It's a lengthy process. Um, not a whole lot of ingredients. But this is your vanilla pound cake from scratch. Wonderful, wonderful cake. Everybody around here loves it. And eh. <laughs> it's a thumbs up, I ain't it? Oh, okay, up, I thought probably. you were going for the cake. No, I ain't to touch the Everybody cake. loves the cake, though. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, now I don't just do um, baking or cooking. I'll go ahead and pre-warn you. We do creating of all sorts. We do DIY videos. Well, that's what this is. Basically, we do 3D printing videos. We do soap making. Um, I do home videos, so I pre-warn you. But if you'll click that subscribe button, hit the little bell next to it, that'll let you know every time we upload. Um, and if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And happy baking. Have a great day.